History of Pakistan's Judicial System Throughout the 76 years of Pakistan's existence, the judiciary has played a pivotal role in shaping the political landscape of this South Asian country. In today's video, we will dig into a brief overview of Pakistan's judiciary and find out how it evolved into the active power center that it is today. Pre-independence era Pakistan's current judicial system traces its origins back to the medieval period and even before that. But hey, we're not going to bore you with a history lecture today. Instead, we'll narrow it down to two main parts, the British era and the post-independence era. So first up, the British era. The arrival of the East India Company in the 1600s marked a significant turning point in the history of the subcontinent. As per the Charter of 1623, the company was allowed to establish their own courts, which initially only had jurisdiction to try its own employees. But with time, as they started becoming a territorial power and increased their influence, their judicial authority expanded as well. By the time the British started ruling the subcontinent, they had created a high court at each presidency town of the subcontinent. These courts exercised original and appellate jurisdictions in civil and criminal matters and were also required to supervise the functioning of lower courts in their respective domains. Apart from presidency towns, the British created high courts in other cities as well, including Allahabad, Patna, Lahore, and Rangoon, expanding their legal framework across different regions. Other than that, the British also introduced many laws, a lot of which are still followed in Pakistan. In 1937, two years after passing of the Government of India Act, the British established a federal court whose judges were appointed by the Crown and held office until reaching the age of 65. The federal court exercised original, appellate and advisory jurisdiction. All in all, the British left a lasting legacy in shaping the judicial structure of the subcontinent, introducing pivotal laws and institutions which to this day continue to influence Pakistan's judicial system. Post-Independence Era the morning of 14 August 1947, a nation is born. Pakistan came into being following the partition of the subcontinent by the British. The new country inherited most of its institutions, laws, and policies from its colonial rulers, the British. As a result, in its initial years following independence, Pakistan continued to recognize the Government of India Act of 1935 as its provisional constitution until the formulation of its first constitution in 1956. This meant that the judicial system introduced by the British remained functional in the newly created Pakistan. The courts, legal framework, and the law introduced during the colonial era continued to operate and form the basis of Pakistan's judicial system. Changes after constitutions of 1956, 1962, and 1973. Pakistan became a republic after it adopted its first constitution in March 1956. Through this constitution, the Federal Court of Pakistan was renamed as the Supreme Court of Pakistan. However, the constitution was tossed out the window by President Iskander Mirza in 1958 after imposing martial law in the country. Pakistan adopted its second constitution in 1962, six years after abrogating its first one. General Ayub Khan, who was the president of Pakistan at the time, appointed the commission headed by the three or chief justice of the country, Muhammad Shah Button, to draft the text for Pakistan's second constitution, which was later approved and became known as the Constitution of 1962. The new constitution introduced certain safeguards to ensure the independence of the judiciary. For instance, judges of the Supreme Court and the high courts were given security of service. Other than that, the 1962 Constitution also provided the judiciary powers to review the actions taken by the executive, a massive increase in the judiciary's authority. But just as the Constitution of 1952, Pakistan's second constitution found itself abrogated by yet another military general, General Yavya Khan. Fast forward to 1971, Pakistan is in the midst of a political storm. Elections have been held, however. The victorious Awani Li is being denied its right of forming the central government. General Yahya Khan, the president, is under pressure from Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's People's Party to postpone the opening session of the National Assembly, which was scheduled to meet on the 13th of February. On March 25th, General Yahya finally gives in to the pressure and postpones the National Assembly session. All hell breaks loose as protests intensify in East Pakistan. The rest is history. East Pakistan becomes Bangladesh, while Bhutto forms his government in whatever remains of Pakistan. After forming his government, Bhutto, now three president, invited leaders of all the political parties to meet with him on 17 April 1972 
to draft a new constitution for Pakistan. Legal experts, constitutional analysts, and leading minds of the country began working on formulating a constitution they hoped would represent the will of the people of Pakistan. Finally, by February 1973, the draft for the third constitution of the country was reviewed and signed by leaders of all political parties, and by August 1973, Pakistan had got its current constitution. Current Judicial System in Pakistan Zoom into Pakistan's current legal playground. The country's judicial system has remained some of the same after the adoption of the 1973 constitution. There is a Supreme Court which is the highest court in Pakistan. It has a total of 17 judges, one of whom is called the Chief Justice, the OG Judge. At the provincial level, there are high courts, one for each province. Their composition varies. For instance, the Lahore High Court has a total of 60 judges, while the signed High Court has 40. Islamabad, the capital of the country, also has a High Court, which has a total of 7 judges. All High Courts have a Chief Justice, who is usually the senior most judge of that court. Then, we come to the Junior Courts. These are called the District and Sessions Courts. Pakistan has around 205 of such courts. There is also a Federal Sharia Court which is basically responsible to determine whether any law passed by the country's legislature is in conformity with the principles of Islam. The federal Sharia court has eight judges. Pakistan's judiciary has seen many ups and downs and has also been subject of many controversies over the years. All that has evolved the judiciary into what it is today. As we move forward, the judiciary remains to be a crucial pillar in upholding the rights of the common man and ensuring the functionality of a democratic society. Join us next time to find out what the judiciary and judges of Pakistan have been up to since the creation of the country and how their judgments have impacted the society Pakistan is living today. Until next time.